A lot of hay has been made about America's declining rates of community participation. Luminaries from Ron Fournier to David Brooks have noted that in the U.S., there are fewer bowling leagues, community softball teams, and social activities than there were just 50 years ago. This is true of our TV entertainment as well, with shows now being micro-targeted to sub-demographics so they can run for the exact length of time that will be of maximum profitability to whatever debt-laden streaming service. I think the last show that the country watched as a community in its entirety was Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. It's a strange role for such a show to fill. What with it being tucked away on HBO and being an adaptation of a book series read by utilicult wearers and Renfair flautists. There was no stopping it. Gambo's final episode notched over 17.8 million live viewers, or penultimate episode, a record that will probably not be beaten on premium cable for many years. It was viewed all over the world in similarly massive slices of audiences, smashed through previous format and network best for repeat viewings, and Gambo inspired countless baby names, bad names, and office office tchotchkes. Everyone watched it, everyone talked about it, and nothing since has even hinted at coming close to its complete domination. There are also a few shows as widely hated in their final stretches. Daniel Weiss and David Benioff, the series runners, uh, sometimes derisively referred to as D&D, ran out of original material from series author George R.R. R. Martin late into the game and started working with their own ideas in conjunction with unexplored series storylines. That's when less liked characters took center stage, storylines got needlessly muddled, and fan favorites started behaving strangely. Weiss and Benioff still made HBO and everyone else a ton of money and the world was their oyster. Their follow-up was supposed to be a speculative fiction series about if slavery still existed in America. It was quickly met with broad Twitter backlash and shuttered before production began. However, the original ride of D&D, Game of Thrones, is incomparable to anything in recent history. As it is its decline in quality, and I have a lot of theories about the world's reaction the ending of the series that I'd like to get into with Matt. So let's get going. So Game of Thrones, the show, uh, what, what, what reviewings did you do? Uh, I, I did a little sprinkle. I, I, I think I did. I, you know what I honestly did? I watched the fucking, the big battle episodes. Yeah. Cause those are the like self-consciously most, uh, most, uh, uh, cinematic episodes. Yeah. And they're sort of like the thing that, Everything else is really built around because the show is, it's got this veneer of prestige, but it really is about delivering just the glandular pleasures and all of those, like the center of that every season is the big fight. Yeah. And everything else is just sort of about teasing you to that orgasm. So I just went full nut. I just hit the nut button. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how you have to do it. If you're doing a rewatch and it is a similar thing, like, Battle of Blackwater, Battle of the Bastards. I sprinkled a lot of season one in there because season one's very interesting to me. Uh, but Game of Thrones, okay, you know how we talk about how some shows are made for being gift or some shows are being made for like out of context viral Twitter posts where it's like this, you know, th- this. And it's just some like culture war monologue that you'll forget in a year. Game of Thrones, you know what that was made for? Game of Thrones was made for uh, YouTube music videos where you take scenes from the show and mix it with like an Avenged Sevenfold song or Ecstasy yes. of Gold. It's a fan panel come to life. Yeah. Game of Thrones is like, there's this guy I always think about when uh, Vine was a thing. Uh, I wish there was a uh, video component to this podcast because I just have to describe this guy even though he's perfect. It was a guy who um, wore like, you know, the shitty striped leather jacket that every in the swears and like yeah. he was like a telegenic enough guy he had like the uh one of those like uh pompa- low pompadour haircuts that were popular in like 1998 with white men and he was just lip syncing uh the one imagine dragon song that everyone knows and just like freaking out and i <laughs> love that vine because that guy's in such pure unalloyed joy and he thinks he looks so fucking cool. And he actually like, he's a decent looking guy and he probably like got to fuck an equally stupid woman, at least one off of that. <laughs> um, anyway, he got to booby hugs. Yeah. That's 
what I think about when I think of like Game of Thrones and the people that like just fucking love it. I mean, there are multiple levels of people that love it. There are I sort of equate it to pro wrestling where there are people who are just in it. They love they loved it beginning to end. Like maybe they noticed a little fall off in quality, but they, uh, they you know, they're, they're with it for the long haul. They still loved it. They miss it. And then there are like the, the sparks, like the people who are like, oh, what are D&D up to now? And they still watch the entire fucking thing like me, like you. Oh, yeah. No, I was I was strapped in. Yeah. But it's interesting. <sighs> The, so I have a lot of thoughts on Game of Thrones, just the show going from, you know, the first season on to what it became. Because, you know, how we've talked about how there are confines to what TV can be. Deadwood exceeded them. That's what killed it. It was the dog running through the electric fence. The Sopranos stretched them as much as humanly possible. Yeah. Uh, but still existed within the confines. The wire is very, and breaking bad are very much within those confines. Game of Thrones is like, it doesn't feel like a TV show. It feels like it just, you know, you made like 10 Lord of the Rings movies or Marvel movies and cut yeah. them up. No, it, 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 it like game of Thrones is like, cause it, it, it totally makes sense that game of Thrones came down prominence at the exact same time as the Marvel cinematic universe. Cause they functioned as the same thing. It's it, the mother the game of Thrones and, and uh, Marvel are basically the same cultural phenomenon uh, in, in, uh, ab- absorbed different ways. Yes. Absorbed in the form of a weekly television show that's that comes out like for a burst every uh, couple of years, uh, or a yearly like twice twice biannually pilgrimage to the movie theater. That's the, th- the only thing that really separates them. Otherwise, they're absorbed at the same level as like a new like uh, or or myth. Yeah, it, it doesn't, I don't feel like it exists in the confines of TV in the same way like Breaking Bad does. It exists, in, it definitely exists in confines. It exists in the confines of like popular fantasy. And- yeah, this new thing, this like, this, 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 the, po- the str- like they're, they were both uh, uh, antecedent to this acceleration towards like the total, like the, the stripping of content of any sort of weight or differentiation, the turning it into just a pure stream. An exactly, online stream exactly. with no with no even like so like no distinction in ritual or behavior or engagement with it at all like that's that's the, the these were the two strains that were going to like pull it together to like to, to the union of the the ice and fire basically yeah of, yeah of marvel and uh marvel and gambo that's and that's what i so i think the first three seasons are very good they're very fun to watch and i think the concept of game of thrones is fun it's we're dealing with what like 1300s europe yeah and, and, and you know what it's got it's got the world building and i'm a sucker for it i actually i love world building i uh after what i i i didn't watch gambo for uh, uh after the first season even with all the the love because i was never a fantasy guy i read some pierce anthony yeah, books when i was a kid but it was i was never a sword guy i was never one of those guys yeah me neither and, you know, i was never really a genre guy at all but it was definitely more sci-fi than that bullshit. Same. You know, fair. I was never for Tolkien or any of that. But then, you know, you just kept hearing about how good it was, and and it was became more and more part of a cultural conversation. I was like, all right, I'll check it out. And I I binged the first season. Just was like, this is awesome. Yeah. And then the, I think they were like the third season was about to come out, and I binged the second season. And then having to wait for the third season because I think it was going to be months. Uh, I fucking started reading the books. So I read the whole damn books between watching the second season and seeing the third season live. It, and the books are like, I want to add a caveat. I have not read the books. I just, but you, you are hilariously conversant in game of Thrones book lore, even though you have never read the books. It is amazing. To so me. I, uh, I had a really bad stretch of insomnia in 2017 and 2018. And when I would be up at like 5 AM, I would just watch videos by a guy's named like, you know, the maroon cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yes. Who were like, who were like, all right. So, what's the history of Dorn? And I would read like the yeah. fan Wikipedia. What's going on with those fucking guys? Yeah. Why, why they dressed up like that? Why they got their <laughs> tiles on their head? Why are your pants so big, man? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you guys all swingers? What, what's what that the about? hell's going on? Is that just a, what? Is the that Sam Hill's going on? All, 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 he's got to talk funny. Are you all, all, Everybody else is like past the crumpets, and this gentleman's over here. He's having a damn bullfight. <laughs> well, what the hell? Is, are all your princes bisexual, or is it just the one? 
I need to get under the hood of this here predicament. <laughs> so that's what happened with me. But it's like, okay, so like that's I, I was like you, like I was not really a fantasy guy. I tried reading Lord of the Rings when I was a kid. Uh, and I just like it went right through me. It was like this is yeah. just eight million pages about a bunch of little guys eating special bread and singing songs. <laughs> you have to have a certain tuning. Yeah. You have to be uh you gotta be of the land, shall we say? Yeah. It's not very good. It's not for Semites. My dad loved it. Just put That's it that why way. I read it. My dad was like, You should read these. And I was like, How the fuck did you read these? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Because to me, it's like I'm I'm too Jewish to like that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm too Jewish to like Tolkien, you know? It's for And I'm not Jewish. It's for Anglos. My dad loved it. Yeah. My dad also read it incorrectly. Like my dad was like he loved the movies, like we saw all the movies as a family and he was like, "Yeah, you know the elves are actually the Jews." And it's like, "Yeah, sure. That's what Tolkien thought." Yeah. <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> it's not the dwarves, we're the elves. We're the sexy immortal warriors. <laughs> Yeah, yep. for sure. Not the little greedy, <laughs> uh, oafish creatures who love gold more than that's anything. what like a psycho Anglo Christian would think of us. Would think of you. Yeah, because like the, as capitalism emerged from the the ferment of, of of feudalism and it tore up the old feudal ties, uh, like people, someone had to carry out the function of abrogating like social transactions to the market, and it couldn't be anybody in the community. It had to be this other, and so well these gaunt pedophiles are making their fucking uh uh larders of treasure they have to uh they have to sublimate all of their feeling sense of guilt about it off on these poor people and now and then they get to stand at olympian remove and be like yes you you dug too greedily and deep on whose behalf <laughs> yeah, exactly like why did we need banking if you weren't yeah offering the world you anglo freak but uh yeah it was for lord autumn bottom because he wanted a set of like crystal uh uh dildos <laughs> for his fucking uh his his cot here of mistresses but so yeah going back a bit i so i loved growing up like my foundational fictional series were like i loved halo like any kid my age fucking love Taylor. I loved Philip K. Dick and I loved <laughs> doing the most and the Philip K. Dick, not so much, but those other two, like they're all about the world building. Like Halo, none of the characters in Halo are interesting, but the world they created fucking rocks. Same with Warhammer. That's the thing. World building is cool. Cause like I have read all the, all the uh, song of ice and fire books, tore through them, love them. I I've, I've kind of made peace with the fact that I'm not going to see any more, even though I would really like to, uh, I've even read all of the uh, ephemera, like I've read the fake history of uh, of uh, the Seven Kingdoms that he like co wrote and the Atlas. I mean, I got deep into it, but I never did any other uh, fantasy thing. I didn't read Wheel of Time or any no, of these yeah, other Wheel big of ones, Time. or even dabble at no, all. Yeah, I was like, nah. I like Game of Thrones. I don't like fantasy as a genre because. I respond to that the same way I keyed into Dune. The difference for me is that, and I think you would agree, even though you love Dune. Uh, oh, right. You haven't read the books. Well, I'll tell you. I have read the books. Martin is a much, much better, oh, oh, much, much better Dune prose book. stylist. And that's my problem. Like, at a certain yeah, point, Herbert's, I love the Herbert, Dune Herbert's world building. Herbert's a weak writer. I would rather just, like, read a list of glossary items about, and, you know, like a, like a, a, a wiki of the world then actually read him recounting things happening in it. Whereas Martin is, he's like at the Stephen King level of just like a like virtuoso, like narrative flow. He is to book writing what like, you know, uh, Dick Wolf is to TV producing. He makes it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, this goes down smooth as baby butter. Yeah. And it's like, uh, Frank Herbert, very much not. Yeah. Reading Dune. I try someone. It's like eating. It's like eating gravel. Yeah. Someone got me a, beautiful anniversary copy of dune like you know the big hard hard one oh yeah i, I saw yeah. it it's gorgeous it's beautiful and i love it and i like i peer through it for parts that I, I i like from when i first read it but herbert is like yeah if that's like if george R. R. martin is making you a milkshake frank herbert is making you like hard tack yeah, he is yep. not yeah, a good yeah. writer yep yeah, no, it's yeah, it's like it's like these are weak old uh, Captain Crunch you're trying to get yeah, through. But his world is fucking awesome. And, oh, it rules. And the world, both those worlds, I, I Dune and Game of Thrones, I think have a lot of common. 
they're just taking like v- the most interesting bits of existing history and transposing yep. them either on a yep. fictional past or yep. a speculative and that's what future. Charges it, it charges it with like all this drama because like our history, I think, is all received to us as as dead, and our destinies is written. You yeah. know, but you can live in Westeros or you could live uh, uh, on Arrakis. And you can honestly imagine another world that you can charge with meaning because it reflects the world that you live in and its pain and its, its, you know, potential reflect the world you see around you in its history and in its uh, future that are, you're either like recounting or projecting. Yeah. And they, they have enough elements that you identify. Like I love what Dune does where it's like that, that Protestantism and Catholicism have merged. <laughs> the, yes. Yeah, you, the orange, yeah, Catholic, orange Catholic, Bible. Catholic Bible, but it's like, it's Zen Sunnis. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, you know, it's like, it's like a very vivid dream where there's so much from your life there that it feels real as, as well, Dan Barrett just, saying, yeah. it isn't real, but it feels real. Um, and, and the, the undermining, the underlining gimmick of game of, uh, of Dune is really underrated. Just the idea of what if it's super far in the future, but they just don't have computers. Yeah. Ideologically. Like they just decided no. Well, I'm psychics. And then they had to like turn humans. They had to turn humans into machines in order to uh, like uh, accelerate technologically. It, and then everything comes from that. Incredible. Like, because yeah. everything in the show, everything like all those progressions, like the Bene Gesserit, it's all about like turning humans into machinery. Yeah. It, that's an incredible world future. And I, the other thing I love about Dune is how important uh, resource extraction is. Like, I, I feel yes. like in other... The spice must motherfucking flow. Yeah, I feel like in other fiction, like, resource extraction is pretty much an afterthought. It's like... W- it's totally, yeah. Like, I mean, the Game of Thrones doesn't go as deep, but it definitely gets economics. Exactly. That's the parallel in Game of Thrones. Because, yep. like, in other... In, in Lord of the Rings, there is no economics. Yeah, there's no economics. Everyone is no, just it's pro a, it's, it's, a, it's a pagan anarch anarcho commune it is because people have called tolkien an anarchist it's like yeah it's like this is just folk society self-organized that's what Chaz uh would have been like if it kept going it would have been it would have been <laughs> yeah. if people had given it if people had only hashtagged it given more. it a chance we would have gotten middle earth but yeah no no one everyone at game of thrones the only thing they want is the ring and that's another thing i didn't yeah. like about it is that it's just like or they're like Aragorn, and it's like, what motivates Aragorn? Like, there's I, no motiva- they don't fuck either. It's like there's no earthiness to this. This isn't like these people aren't operating from actual human motives, right? So they're not relatable. And even Paul, who they turn into a god and then like a killer of mil, like he has these human qualities. They become less pr- pronounced, and that's kind of the point of his character that they go out as as you yeah. go. But even still, you can understand him as a human. Uh, but so Game of Thrones does this in in the sense that like this first season is War of the Roses, you know, mm-hmm. it's the the Lancasters and the Yorks, oh yeah, standing in the the, the Lannisters <laughs> and, the Starks. and the Starks. Very clever, <laughs> yeah, there, George. We see you. Yeah, and like you know, Westeros is just England. Uh, they don't. They're not super loyal to it, which I think is good because if you did that, you would just have the Tudors, which. I think has only been watched by accident by uh, yeah, yeah, guys no, you, watching Ray you, Donovan. You're using it as an inspiration and a jumping off point, and then you get you get nutty with yeah. it, and that's 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 the like that's the challenge of 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 doing synthetic, you know, speculative historical fiction like this. That's what's cool about that's what's cool about the world building. Like, oh, what if Spain was a fucking part of England? Yes, like that's fucking cool. That's a cool idea. Yeah, like yeah, what if Spain was a part of the England and it was this like insurgent kingdom? That was never fully conquered. Yeah, and it's like it's it's sort of like the Iberian. It, it is like a syncretized like Iberian, uh, like uh, Muslim native culture thing. You know, it's like if the it, it's like it's it, it it's yeah, it's sort of like Tudor England was attached to uh like the caliphate. Yeah, of the uh, like the uh, the um of Iberia, which is why it's such a shame that the Dorn storyline sucked so fucking bad. Ooh, yeah. Uh, and I got to say, uh, that one you can't really put on Benioff and Weiss. Yeah. The, the Dorn portions are widely considered the weakest portions of the books as well. 
the le- it just it's so much dirt because the thing is is it's very very little relatively of, of substance happens but there are some key things that have to happen yeah. and so what he ends up having to do is he keeps having to go back to it and like just leaven the bread with some more you know filler to keep you from forgetting about it but it never actually adds up to anything and it's like this is just killing me yeah it it's they took out what could have been a very interesting Dorn storyline uh yeah. young griff and john connington i gotta say young griff would have been better than what they yeah did. uh and if they like they could have they could have like taken all that screen time they use uh with dorn and and had like the young griff thing emerge from that uh, and that would have been a way better use of time than whatever the hell they were doing. I will say the the real bummer of Dorn, not only is it a cool idea, but uh, Oberyn Martell, his arc is, I think, a series highlight. Oh, it's great. It's great. And like the Battle of the Viper in the Mountain fucking is maybe awesome. what the best scene in the yeah, show. Yeah, fucking awesome. And so going back through for like, yeah, the first, I'd say 60, 67.333% of the show, what makes it cool and what makes it makes it so good is that, yeah, it's not conventionally a TV show. It doesn't follow the conventions of a TV show, because if it did, Ned would be alive. You know, Oberyn would be alive uh, through the through the end of the series and maybe die at the end or whatever. But yeah, they're the heroes. They're 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 lampshaded as heroes. And I remember when people were hyping it up. They were like, oh, this show is so good. They like don't follow any rules. They just, you know, they fucking killed Ned Stark. And that's when I realized this was just a bunch of cut up films because yeah, in a TV show, you don't kill Ned Stark, but in a film, you absolutely kill him at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. You, you, you establish stakes. Yeah. You sacrifice a fan favorite to establish the stakes of the situation and to, to provide a, a plot, you know, motivation. Cause like, yeah, he, his death changes the dynamic. Yeah, it, You know, if this was fucking, you know, if Rocky, those series of films were a TV show, yeah, you wouldn't kill Apollo Creed, but you would in a movie. Yep, yep, But yep. It, I think it does show yep. how weak TV is in that this was essentially like, if Game of Thrones, you do the Men in Bat Black Memory Wipe, you turn these into like a series of films that people watch, how do you think they're remembered? They're remembered as like these really fun movies that came out from 2009 through 2018. And people would be like, oh, those are cool. And they wouldn't talk about it a ton, but they would do pretty well, right? Like, yeah. you know, it, it, but it wouldn't be like the cultural force the TV show is. But because it was on TV, where a show that's like entertaining in this sense is expected to be kind of shitty in the way like Sons of Anarchy is or like Quantico or yes. something, it excelled far past people's expectations. And it got, it oh, yeah. probably got the highest amount of people ever to subscribe to HBO. Honestly, I think kind of what happened is, is I feel like when that came come out, I was very aware of it. I didn't watch it, but I was aware of the discourse because this is when I was at my most bug man, when I was looking at like uh, Breaking Bad reviews and stuff. I also read the something uh, and, awful thread on this. So. Yes. And people approached it, like the critics and stuff approached it sort of with a little bit of uh, ginger gingerliness, like they were coming up up to a meteor strike or something, because they were like, okay, we have this new standard of what TV is worth talking about, and this has a lot of the the uh, the things that we normally associate with that big budget being on HBO. That's a big one, mm-hmm. big stars and all that. But this subject matter does this count? And Honestly, I think what made the decision for them was just the fact that people liked it. And as soon as it became popular, a narrative was retroactively built around, well, this new genre, it's defined the genre. It's like, well, yeah, you just found out that actually people just want to watch a show yeah. and talk about it and that your standards uh, have sort of outlived their usefulness because you've gotten like a, 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 a larger, you've like maximized the amount of people who are paying attention now. You know, to this, like, all right, you've got our attention. And it's like, here is a thing that's just barely crossing the thresholds for serious drama. Uh, but uh, enough of the pe- pe- that we're like basically intersecting with like pure, you know, uh, entertainment, you know, pure exploitation and art. And it's like, 
Oh yeah, we'll take the very minimum of that. Mm-hmm. The, the the closest intersection possible. The maximum amount of fat. Give me all the fat in that baby. Marble that motherfucker up. And then, oh, now we have to act like this is a show like these other shows. And all of the discourse around Game of Thrones is this mad uh, bidding war to try to continue injecting relevance and therefore emotional investment into something that, at the end of the day, is really, as Ian McShane said, just tits and dragons. Yeah, no, it's that is exactly the next thing I wanted to get into, because I thought the cottage industry around Game of Thrones was so fuck. It was... I mean, talk about, you know, capitalist media squeezing blood from a stone. <laughs> when yeah, when brutal. they started talking about, like, the sexual politics of the rape scenes in Game of Thrones, it was like, what do you think this is? What, yeah. the f- what do you think this show is? Because yeah. this is, no, you no. would correctly identify this as, like, a stupid, fun movie. Yeah. Yep, but it's coded in such a way that you're, you're, but your brain is rebelling. If you saw this in, in on a on a, in like a Conan remake, like the one they did with Carl Urban, mm-hmm. you would roll your eyes and maybe be like, Ugh. Yeah. you wouldn't engage with it. You wouldn't be traumatized by it. I would. That's only because you feel betrayed. I would say millions of words have been written f- professionally about sexual violence in Game of Thrones, which is uh, insane. Uh, my God, you could, you could. You the, the the million monkeys could spend time amongst those scribblings and put together Shakespeare. How many fucking words to spit yeah. out? And then, so this this went on during Game of Thrones is like good age when there was like D and D were in sync with Martin. And then when it got bad, you know when we got stuff like the Dorn storyline. By the way, I have a theory about the Dorn storyline. I think this was D and D trying to make like a gifable epic like feminist meme yes it was the girl power yeah. thing very cynical especially since that was at the point where they were getting stick for the misogyny yeah, they're like how about we have some for for the for the for the just uh, uh for for the entertainment value basically which is inherently misogynist because oh what's this this is a fucking mass film entertainment it's male gaze all the way yeah. down like tons of fucking do you know how many like just exceedingly n- normal brained women I know in like Minnesota and <laughs> Illinois who fucking love this show? Like literally yeah. like, name their kids after shit in the show. They how many women name their fucking kids <laughs> after fucking Khaleesi? Yeah. Every every woman I know in Minnesota who has like is like a research scientist and this shit like doesn't know who David Brooks is or like <laughs> read thick pieces. They like they fucking this show is like the biggest thing to them outside of like their kids and their family. Like they fucking yeah, love because it bridged the divide because it, it it gave us from both ends of like the cultural divide on like what's the purpose of of entertainment? Is it to enlighten you and and ennoble you, or is it to have fun? Uh, you get to square the circle and get the biggest portion of both. Yeah. So that was we could go on and on about the cultural penetration of Game of Thrones, but safe to say. Out of any show we've talked about, it had the greatest one. And no one's going to come close for a very long time. Very, very long. Maybe ever, because we live in this age of micro-targeting. But uh, the other thing that, I, as the show declined, that's when like people got obsessed with inserting modern politics into Game of Thrones. Yep, it's like they as the uh, as the batch as the batch of art in the Game of Thrones got got weaker. You mm-hmm. know, it had to get stepped on with something else to make the take that place of like you know emotional investment that you can't get from characters because you don't care anymore. Oh, now you're getting your investment from arguing the politics of it, negotiating it whether it's a good or bad thing, like you're dis- diffusing a bomb, and then using it to explicate your politics in other areas, and like give 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 a, a metaphorical po- like structure to your world, and then that takes over for the declining artistic value of the project because those guys were basically just making it up as they go along in terms of how they were actually approaching the adaptation such that when they ran out of material, they ran out of any framework for moving forward. Right. And they ran out of faithful faithfulness to characters. They, they ran out of, you know, Cersei is a great example of this. Like Cersei throughout the show is a great character because she's like an ambitious, ruthless woman 
but also like kind of fucking stupid. Like a oh, hilarious. Oh yeah, that's the fun thing. She's like an evil. It's just it's, it is a fun yeah. character because she is a evil mastermind who is also a dumbass. But then they just made her a mastermind. <laughs> like yeah, they made her. They, oh god, the blowing up. Ooh, just doing the end of Godfather on everybody. Uh, and it's like, well, you could have done that at any time. Yeah. Why like, wait? That, that what? What the fuck? Like, if you're willing to go that far and you can get away with it, then what has all of this bullshit been about? Yeah, that was, and it was. That's something that I don't even really think would happen in a Marvel movie. That's almost too stupid to put in a Marvel movie. It really is so stupid. Yeah, and and then the way, and then the contortions people had to put themselves into just justify it artistically. And it's like, yeah, because you're operating at the level of these made up themes that you're inventing in the first place. Of course, you could put those together. I'm talking about the actual structure of the show. Yeah, or like Littlefinger. Like Littlefinger, I thought was a really interesting character. Like it was. I think historically an interesting character that there are guys like this throughout history, like little Rama manuals who like yeah, Thomas Cromwell. Yes, guys. Exactly. Who just like, just worm their way through systems. And then at the end of the day, it's like, you got betrayed, bitch. You got, Oh, <laughs> like what? Yep. Oh, so what you miss you, you underestimated these sisters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was, sisters and that was all like, for themselves. <laughs> it's like all D and D trying to like, yeah. And be like, no, 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 no. We're sorry for the rape scenes. Like, uh, here, like make this a gift. And it worked with people. It fucking worked with people. People who like, oh my God. Who, pro- who are like, uh, you missed the point of Fight Club by idolizing Tyler Durden or like, yes, I'm exactly like Cersei, the woman who dies under a pile of rocks making out with her brother. Yep. I'm exactly <laughs> like her. I am I'm that much of a girl boss. Yeah, I'm exactly like Olena Tyrell, whose entire bloodline got wiped out. <laughs> wiped out. She got the, owned. The, the, yeah, like the green hands before them. Gone from this earth. Great job. Yeah, I saw that. But she had so many good owns. She's like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's- oh, her descents were so masterful. Did you see that after that like fly was in Mike Pence's hair? People were like, oh, it was RPG. And they put the yep. Elena Tyrell quote in there. And it's like, well, yeah, no, both of them just got owned and wiped out and yeah. replaced. <laughs> it's like <laughs> under no circumstances did her intervention within the, you know, War of the F- Five Kings or whatever on behalf of House Tyrell was a success. No. It, it, you, she annihilated the whole line. She ended Failed. the family forever. <laughs> she ended the family forever and fucking Cersei ended up getting a rock dropped on her fucking head. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it but it, it worked out. Oh, and of course, Khaleesi. Yeah, Khaleesi. She took the hoops out. Yeah, Khaleesi, uh, she took the hoops out. She girl bossed the fuck up. She she vibed on she vibed on the Mayo dicks, uh, got dicked down by her <laughs> nephew and then stabbed to death. Yep. And then her nephew was like, I'm never going to get pussy again. Peace. Never going to get <laughs> he pussy again. He went MGTW. <laughs> He's like, I'm joining ICE and never fucking again. Yep. That's basically I'm, I'm what I'm burning happened. off my balls. Yeah, I'm becoming a border agent and I'm done fucking like that's, you know, but I guess it just goes to show everyone is only as smart as right up to the point where you get to their algorithmic desires until you push those buttons. Yep. Yep, exactly. Yep. As soon as it's no longer convenient for other mechanisms within the, the narrative, then boop yeah people negotiable people who just like space time is negotiable like the distance between things what do you need people who love talking about like uh uh, tarantino should be in prison for me too crimes for filming women's feet (laughs) like you know fucking uh uh, i'm so sick of like guys who don't get but scarface is a bad guy it's like, no, yeah, it's every, like, why every, are you normalizing? Yeah, him? Everyone's like this. Everyone is yeah. this way. Everyone's this yep. way because like, this is what we have instead of anything else. This is what we have instead of the only things we have are this and sports. We don't have religion yep. and, po- and politics, which are all one thing. Yeah. It is seeing our side do well yeah. in a cultural contest, seeing our characters in the, the fate in the self-conscious uh, imaginary of their TV and movies win. And then in politics, they're slightly less abstract, but still fake avatars of the political figures winning. You're just rooting for laundry and 
it's arbitrary and leads to nothing. Yeah, no, it's all the same thing. And everyone is pretty much as stupid as one another. <laughs> it's the one thing we share. Yeah. It's a dumb off. Everyone's just dumb as hell. And just in a, like a Mexican standoff where no one can admit that they're getting dumber every minute, because then that will be sort of, sort of like uh, an admission that you've lost faith in like the greater project, the greater, you know, communicative project you think you're part of. Or you pretend that you're part of like, no, we're like having cultural conversations. We're, we're, we're talking about art and politics. We're, ch- we're creating our, we're shaping the world around us with our actions. No, you're not. You're not doing that. No, yeah. You're watching, you're watching little finger explain his history to, of the Starks to two women who are just, uh, uh l- lesbonically banging each other as practice <laughs> in a bordello. Yeah. It's a stupid show. You're watching a stupid show. Other people are watching a stupid show because that's the other thing. Conservatives love the show too. Oh yeah. Conservatives love the show and that's not them reading it wrong. No, it's what the, it's, 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 it's just open. It's just, you can import your particular neuroses onto it because everything is so amorphous because it's just this baggy narrative without any kind of coherence of theme or imagery or anything. Yeah, Martin has no political perspective beyond like some sort of like 60s lib boomer thing that's like, oh, author- authoritarians can be bad, but sometimes they're right and war is bad, but sometimes you have to do war. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah. It just gets you to the same like milk toast liberalism as every other bo- cultural byproduct of his generation. Yeah, there's just it, it's just characters and cool ways to describe events which is like yeah i don't want i, I don't need for fiction oh, to yeah. be anything hey, else. describe those banquets people get mad at him for describing the banquets i love it it's awesome tell me about the honey chicken give me the trenchers full of stew oh i after i read that i go eat uh, the other thing people complain about is that he always describes uh everybody's sig- sigils bitch i want to know the sigils i want to know the sigils i want to know about the red apple fossaways and the green apple fossaways that's cool if there was an ent- i want to know about like uh the the fucking the 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 uh you know the lion of cray call and such yeah if there was an entire book that's like the histories of the sigils of that major houses they're i would ba- read it there's something like that i got to tell you he he wrote this uh he wrote a couple of these like or co-wrote these uh, ephemera books that I think you would read. You don't have to read the books, but Once I think if you read those, you'd enjoy out, them. And I get another bad spell of insomnia. I'll know everything. Yeah, I would. I would. I think you would have fun with them because it's essentially the lore you read, but you know, in a nice package and written in Martin's prose. Okay, so yeah. it's actually like enjoyable to read in addition to giving you the information you're looking. For. I'm into that. All right, I'm fucking into that. But yeah, no, it, it's. Everyone eating out of the same trough, seeing completely different things in it. But that is, that's kind of one of the final discussion points I want to get to for this. The thing I think is so interesting about the end of the show, and there's not a lot we can say about the end of the series that we haven't already said. It's characters acting out of character. It's uh, events that are cobbled together from like untied story the storylines in the book that you can see the seams everywhere just weeping exactly yeah there are events that uh are supposed to be connected but don't feel like it there are storylines that just don't go anywhere there's um there's a lot of leaning on Jon Snow which is certainly a choice uh oh boy yeah everyone's favorite charisma fountain there <laughs> just never never ending just a character who even on the page kind of sits there yeah. because he is just too stoically a hero. Those characters are never to never to be experienced from the inside. They're strong and silent for a reason. They shouldn't talk. You shouldn't be inside of them metaphorically or physically. Yeah. And, and they spend so much time with him that it really does make you just like, Oh God. Oh God. No, they're, they're, pla- Oh no, they're here again. They're talking. He's talking. <laughs> he said, Sam, Sam, we need to go beyond the wall. <laughs> Sam, we're going to go beyond the wall, Sam. Yeah, Jon Snow doesn't have any character traits besides like brave. <laughs> like he's just yep. He's 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 got all the good stuff, and it's like does he have his bad stuff? Well, sometimes he questions himself. Yeah, it's like this is a Mary Sue, but for a certain idea of uh, you know a stoic like pre-modern masculinity. Yeah, and Jamie Lannett like. Jamie Lannister, way more interesting character. Not exactly novel, just like baby's first anti-hero, but like 
yeah. way more interesting. But just from that perspective alone, is way more dynamic. Yeah. Everybody's more dynamic than fucking yeah. Jon Snow. And of course, Tyrion, who a fan favorite, I mean, way more so. Tyrion, um, I, uh, man, if I could go back in time and I couldn't change anything major, like prevent 9 11 or Bush stealing the election or something or Hitler, uh, it would be to take out the line, I drink and I know things. <laughs> I drink and I do oh, things. Fucking one of the most fucking cringe lines. <laughs> sucks. I do two things. I drink. How many? Oh God! Just how many guys? How many couch bound dorks who just like have Wikipedia entries instead of brains? Yeah, heard that and are like, "That's like me. Yeah. My- That's me and my IPAs and my deep knowledge of uh, of Crimean War trivia." My friend who. Uh- Plays CSGO with me, changes his names to I Drink and I Know Things just to piss me off. Just that to is get very, me very mad. Annoying. Just for me to see it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, as the show degraded in quality, people did not watch it any less, obviously. It continued- oh, you couldn't. What else? There was nothing to replace it with. There's nothing to replace it with. You've, you've already invested in it. And even as much as you bitch about it, you still like watching it. You still like to watch it because you get to talk about it. And that's what it's really there for. It's there as a as a little topic for you to talk about every day. That's what it's there for. It's like a little, it's a Kong filled with peanut yes. butter. And that's so, it's like, it doesn't matter if it's good. It just matters that it's still the same thing that you can keep talking about. You just find a different thing to talk about. It. Now you get to talk about how it's bad, but you still get to talk about it. That's exactly, exactly my point. The final gift Game of Thrones gave the world was that we could all tear apart this pinata. Yeah. It was like, here was now that cultural energy building up to something that could not be with sustained by the actual art. Cause it can't hold up that it couldn't, it, it wasn't built for that, that it was beyond its tolerance and it was folly to ever build it to try to do that in the first place. It out kicked its coverage basically in terms of its, it's uh, the ability to deliver an emotional payoff for what it had built up. So instead, we got ironic mockery, which is just as good. Yeah, it feels the same. It keeps you involved just as much. And you're yeah, and you're close enough for government work. Yes, and as it stands, the end of Game of Thrones, and everyone shit on the ending. Everyone from Trump guys to fucking woke people to regular to, yeah, to no out and it. out communists. Everyone had. More or less the same reasons why it was bad, even if they varied a little bit. But it was the last gift to America. It was the last event that everyone witnessed and broadly recorded as the same thing was the decline and ripping apart of Game of Thrones. The last yep. thing. That was it. That was our wicker man. It was exactly, exactly, exactly. Because everything that has happened immediately before or immediately since no one sees the same way there are two <laughs> two miss me with anything yeah does not move the needle yeah what's what's on now the boys yeah there's and i love the boys but it's like no it's even something like watchmen or uh fucking like any of these shows that even get a little bit of a flicker it's nothing it can't even come close it consumed the whole world it was a moab well I, and now we're in like the cultural backwash of it and now everything is just enough it's all like that it's like after the flaming mo recipe got released and then there were 500 million flaming mo places everywhere and it didn't mean anything anymore like the the currency got inflated and then the fucking market crashed i don't even mean just in media i mean this was the last event we all recorded this happening yeah. in the same way i mean my god like coronavirus is not happening to us, the same way that the Game of Thrones did. No, culturally. it's not. It's not. Yeah. Because with coronavirus, there's like a non-insignificant, like f- 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 tens of millions of people who are like, this isn't happening. People who are literally dying going, I'm not dying from coronavirus. Yep. Yep. Th- th- there are like Trump. There is no consensus reality around corona. There is consensus reality around Game of Thrones. It's a show we all watch. There's no consensus reality around Biden winning. There's no consensus reality around like. Yeah, the end of the Trump presidency, of anything. Everyone just has their own, like, whatever Hugbox media or Hugbox, you know, timeline or whatever, where you can look at the world and say why what's happening isn't happening. Why, yep. you know, if you're a Republican, oh, actually, oh, they've unleashed uh, Jenna Ellis or uh, <laughs> fucking Jay Powell. 
and Trump's going to Trump's actually going to be president for three terms. You know, it's not going to fucking happen if you're a Biden guy. Oh, this was actually the greatest victory ever. We're never going to yep. lose again. <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? But everyone, everyone has their own blinkers and everyone sees these same events and they are either every event is either is the greatest victory for your side yep. I know, in whatever way you interpret it. But Game of Thrones it was the last time that like, yeah, like I'd say uh, who's a Trump guy like Corey Lewandowski and fucking CNN bug man like, uh, you know, fucking Anderson Cooper. What Don, Don Lemon. Lemon? Yeah. Watch the same thing, and we're like, yes, yep, and have the, the same response. This sucks broadly of like, wow, Aria, I didn't know she had it in yeah, her. You go, girl. Like just that. Yeah, yeah, you go, girl. Like instead of every event sparking diametrical and opposed and attacking op, uh, opinions, reaction, a consensus response, reaction and counter reaction industry, uh, outrage counter outrage cycle. And like then monetizing it so you can like sell a shirt that's based off like a typo that Trump made or then like sell a shirt saying that the typo was cool and it was a signal that he's executing pedophiles. Yep. It was the last thing that just was how it was. And I think that's I don't think Benioff and Weiss are like great writers. I don't think they're like amazing at what they do. I think uh Dave Benioff is like, I mean, he's not, he's not the most maligned product that a Goldman Sachs CEO put out in the world. You know, his dad was CEO of Goldman Sachs. Uh, but uh, he's just, you know, he's Philip Green. He was the guy they gave all the money to, you know, hey, run this. Uh, but they did achieve something amazing here in that they created America's last universal community experience. The last one ever. Yep. The last one. The last moment of consensus reality, because now all art as like uh, politics is spectacleized, the the line has been eradicated. So the degree to which, yes, obviously politics is entertainment. Entertainment is all politics. And that means that all uh, entertainment is political. So part of what you get out of watching something is knowing someone else doesn't like it. Yeah. And that means that you cannot have that experience ever again. A new thing that emerges will emerge in this context of being like, you know, Hollywood pedophile propaganda and absorbed as such. Yes. And that means we'll never get another thing like Game of Thrones. It's impossible. Ever, ever. Because anything that comes out, the only way for most media companies to sustain each other, I don't mean media companies making the film, but I mean like the decaying husks of online journalism is to be like, Oh, this movie's bad because it's going to cause white male terrorism, like with the Joker. Or this movie's good because it makes the fuck boys uncomfortable. Or if you're conservative, like yep. this movie's bad because like the director, you know, maxed out to Joe Biden and he, he yep. made a pedophilia tweet in 2011. Or, you know, God, I cannot remember the number of fucking times that I saw reviews of things that were supposed to be important in the pop culture shitosphere being reviewed with like this almost breathtakingly uh, cynical uh, admission of like putting on critical guardrails yeah, oh my because God. of political reasons. Yeah. Like I remember reading the reviews for like Ghostbusters and one of the woke take mills where they were just saying, you know what? It's not that funny. Uh, <laughs> the pacings isn't great, but when you consider what they went up against and how this just like, it it represents people 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 who didn't used to feel like they were part of ghostbusters now feel like they're part and that means something and it's like you are making this up as you go along to just cover up for the fucking bare fact that this is shit yeah and and the way to eval- evaluating this shit in a way that uh, proposes that no there's some way that this is good and it involves politics is a fucking lie if you're a conservative your interpretation of art is largely the same. It's always been that it's indoctrinating people into Satanism and it's going to make your kids gay or wear dresses and all this shit, or it's sympathetic to terrorists or whatever. And you're completely divorced from reality in your own way. But now if you're a liberal, it's the same thing where it's like any piece of media, it's not going to get you into Satanism, but it's going to, you know, it's going to make you some like weird amalgam of uh, what a type of white male that like worships Fight Club and does domestic terrorism, but also like votes for Bernie or some shit. Yeah. Uh, 
there's the same view of art as fundamentally able to corrupt anyone. Uh, and it operates on the same fantasy that the die isn't already cast that it, it, anything that happens, it's because our goose, our goose is cooked. It operates on the same sort of cloudy optimism that if we just get the bad art out of there, we're going to got to get that bad art out there to get the good card in. And then we will all be better. And by being better, the world will get better because we our actions are not determined by our material relationships. Of course, they're determined by our moment to moment decisions on how to behave. Yeah. And if we change them, we will change our conditions. This is a form of ideology. This is liberalism. Yeah. But again, you know, Game of Thrones didn't exist on that continuum. There was no one who was like, yeah, I mean, there were these shitty woke articles about it, but no one was like, you're going to become a, uh, you're going to become like an incel mass shooter because of Jamie Lannister. Well, I'll tell you why. I think this is why this was the last thing. It's because it came out around the same time O'Bungler got in there. Yes. Okay. So this is the first big moment. This is like, O'Bungler and uh, uh, Game of Thrones are part of the same cultural convulsion that comes with the 2008 economic crash, basically. like They're both forged in that seller star of social contraction and trauma yeah. and everyone rearranging their material conditions to deal with it. And, you know, mass evictions and the, the, uh, the gigification of the economy, yeah. the destruction of all, you know, non, uh, the destruction of any kind of work-life balance, monetization of all human life. And so what that means is, is that they both formed a cultural thesis and Obama was part of that cultural thesis. And it's broadly what the democratic party represents now culturally, you know, Marvel, all this stuff is part of this Borg of cultural utterances to the democratic party, right? Like we all understand that all the Avengers are for Trump or for Biden. Everybody gets the culture is broadly democratic. You can say anything else about that, but, but that's, you know, our understanding and the thing like game of thrones is part of that umbrella of stuff uh now but it took a while for that to form under it took the whole of obama's eight years for that cultural like uh trend to set in and then for trump to emerge as the antithesis and define this new terrain so that everything that came later would get filtered through that distinction that's a great point but but uh gambo was emergent of that moment and so because it was cultural and not like as political as obama who immediately got politicized it was able to hold on and but it did end like right as that transition to trump was happening so it was like the perfect obama era like cultural uh emanation of the new liquefied globalized diverse america right that is what people talk about when they think about the cathedral or uh the, the the world that you're getting red pilled from if you're right uh, alt-right person right and that's part of it but it had to do it first and a, and a lot of these people i think who hate all culture now and think it's all pedophiles they loved game of all thrones. of them but if game of thrones came back they couldn't love it again they would hate it because yeah and then people on the other side would instantly yeah do it do they what they did it. towards the it, end it'd be like all the characters are RBG. it would be rbg from the jump yeah first episode like this is this is work well you know how we always talk at the end about the conditions that would need to exist to recreate one of these classic shows yeah oh man this would only happen this is the most unlikely thing if bernie had won with like an 80 seat super majority yeah if we had somehow steered around this if we'd like yeah metabolized a new a new new deal like it, it obviously you couldn't it wouldn't be as stable as the other one because of declining rate of profit but just arresting the fall yeah just a temporary like hiccup in total like immiseration it would have given us like a little bit of a good vibe for a minute it wouldn't even and then we'd have to negotiate from there it would it would have to be beyond bernie being a two-term president with a super majority for eight years it would have to be like the military is like we are 100 percent with bernie we yeah. control the president. We control. We there's a little green book of Bernie yeah, ideology. Yeah. Everyone like Bernie yeah. has to have 95 percent approval ratings. There has to be gulags for like Michael Bloomberg and shit. It, yeah, it, it's essentially if it, it like when they say turn America into Venezuela, it's like well, like in the sense of the same approach, the same strategy of governments. You know, like getting to a point where you 
you know, get a mass party that connects to a military that's under your control. Yeah. And then you rule that way. It's like, yes, but because instead of being, you know, an exploited Petro straight on the periphery, we are the actual reserve currency of the world. I think things would go a little differently. Yeah, yeah. So that's what would need to happen for another show like this, because that would take the annoying political elements out of culture and take a lot of the annoying cultural elements out of politics. Yes. Split that. Go back in those. Fuck, get get out. Get the genies back in that bottle, yes, please. Yes. Take the. I know it's not doesn't work that way, but oh, man, just let me just please let me dream of it. That is the only way we're going to get another thing like this. The only way. So if you um, I know no one went home for Thanksgiving this year, but yep. next time. Because, you know, Joe is getting that vaccine, baby. Uh, talk to your military uncles and uh, <laughs> Gaddafi pill them, maybe green pill them. Yeah, get, yeah, get, get, <laughs> let's get on that uh, the green book shit. Yeah, let's get on. We that. need the military to sign on to like a broadly social democratic internationalist. I mean, it's like that. I mean, people, I have said this before, like the most likely, none of them are very likely, but the most likely like, uh, 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 emergence of like a counter hegemonic challenge to, um, to this neoliberalism we're in will emerge from some sort of free officers movement, yeah, like yeah. on the Chavez or a uh, Nasser, uh, like bath party model like that's that's, that's it. No, it that's all we have well if you're one of the military officers who has been to our live shows which there are a few of you there are yeah, some that is heartening to get me get cracking boys yeah you, get you want there. another get, fucking gambo get fucking cracking you can, the one thing that actually helps out us a little bit is that god bless them the one thing that i always like think hey maybe in the long run this might help out if we do get in there and start infiltrating boring the slow boards uh is all of the top brass of the military, one thing they have in common, by definition, they all went to college. That's they true. all went through the college experience. And they, yeah, a lot of them are psychos, but you got more to work with, maybe, than you would with other group of people. So get to work. Yeah, get to working, guys. We're we're just not going to have shows anymore. Like, you got to fucking... We're going to have too many shows that, like... Too many goddamn shows. Be a million. It's like, hey, everyone is for your... Everyone's just trying to hold a mirror up to a person. Yeah. To show them their exact experience, but also telling... A funhouse mirror telling that all their miseries are actually uh, endearing qualities and that they should continue to be on... Uh, to prefer their extant misery to anything that would risk discomfort. So that is our final review and our final take about Game of Thrones' place in history. If you are a military officer, become Gaddafi right now. Fuck. Yes. Yeah. The f- Let's do it. Come on. Strike the green tents. Hurry up, pal. I don't, I don't know. Ten hut. I've waited 30 fucking years at, at this point in my life for something. Can you give me yeah. fucking something here? Yes. An American De Gaulle, at least. Please. Just, just a, a De Gaulle. fucking De Gaulle. I'm not asking I, I'm for at, much. I mean, De Gaulle is not a lot to ask for, but just a We De can't even do a De Gaulle in this country. Like, hurry up. Jesus Christ. Yeah. My whole fucking life, nothing. You give me John Kerry? Come on. Oh, God. David Petraeus? Oh, my fucking Stanley God. fucking Bud Light Lime McChrystal ass bitch? Oh, uh, who's that? Ni- Guy got yeah. caught on a hot mic like a fucking uh, Frank Drebin <laughs> taking a piss? <laughs> fucking oafs we need something here guys please um but we're holding out for a hero we're holding out for a hero so we can get some more gambo yep <laughs> yes as always i'm felix peterman i'm Matt Grisman. and we'll see you next time when the green tent rises be steady be wary fight the eternal devil let's do this uh the tall grass falls at midnight or something goodbye valar morgulis valar morgulis you know you gotta say valar dor harris dude God damn it. God damn. Fucking pseudo. Bye.